And seven days ago, the University of North Carolina left Phoenix national champions. And back on October 13th, only one team gets this privilege every year, the unveiling of the 2017 National Championship banner inside the Dean Smith Center. Tonight, North Carolina opens the season against Northern Iowa. You are watching the ACC on ESPN. With Dino Gaudio, I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. Tara Petrolino will join us in just a bit. Dino, as is the case, every year some new faces come in some exit this is a little bit different looking north carolina team kevin the defending national champions have a much different look this year going from an experienced and powerful front line last season to accomplished veteran backcourt this year but here's what you need to know it's still carolina basketball they play fast they put an emphasis on pounding it inside and they want to dominate the glass we will see some freshmen Mixed in in the front court, as you pointed out. And away we go, the 2017-2018 college basketball season is underway. And we thank you for joining us. The defending national champions. And there's a foul inside. That is one of the freshman bigs, Garrison Brooks. And you're seeing that Carolina's going to play the same way. They want to go inside, try to play inside out. That's why we see the basketball go in early to Garrison Brooks. Northern Iowa strong team with a stronger front court kind of the inverse their backcourt is very young sophomore starting point guard and up at the top Clint Carlson he has improved that area of his game heading into this season from outside well you're seeing what he does well he's a stretch four that could step out and shoot threes Luke May's going to have to go out there and pressure that shot this is Theo Pinson, the senior. Inside the drive, that is the point guard, Juwan McLeod. Well, you heard Pinson just a moment ago. Joel Berry is inactive today, a few weeks back. He broke his right hand, and he's expected to return soon. This is the heartbeat of the team that's not out there for the first couple well, of weeks. You're looking at the ACC most outstanding player in 2016. You're looking at the 2017 Final Four most outstanding player. And you know, you have an opening night like Carolina does right now without your starting point guard. And Cam Johnson, we're not sure whether he's going to play or not. That's a big loss for a young Carolina team. It was October 23rd when he broke his hand. Coaches want him back for the Phil Knight Invitational, which is a couple weeks away. Kevin, I was at practice uh, earlier this week on Tuesday. Now, he's out there. He's shooting. He's working on his ball handling with both hands. But obviously, it's a long year. Let's be cautious with this kid, and that's what Carolina's doing. And so on the floor, Theo Pinson is tasked with the leadership duties. Quick bucket inside of the slam that time for Bennett Cook. Now Bennett Cook was outstanding last year. Four for five from the field, but the problem was he only played 13 minutes last year, saddled with fouls. Nice turn, and that is Garrison Brooks. One of a handful of freshmen that North Carolina is going to lead <laughs> on in the front court. <laughs> when you lose Meeks and Hicks, and Tony Bradley, you got four young freshmen, and Garrison Brooks has emerged as the most efficient on the offensive end of the floor in the early part of the season for the Tar Heels. Yep, top four rebounders from a year ago are now gone, and Luke May with the board. Kenny Williams is injured for a good portion of last season. His confidence is there, though, to start the season. Well, Roy loves this kid, and, and he loves his toughness and how hard he plays, but Kenny Williams must make shots. Jalik Felton leaves it for May, and Northern Iowa regathers. So Jalik Felton, the freshman, a top 30 recruit 
for Roy Williams, and he is going to handle the point guard duties until Joel Berry returns. He, he is really talented, but along with your skill set, decision making is just as important for a point guard. A bad decision on the other end for Jalik Felton with the shot. That's a foul in Northern Iowa. Cook tried to set the screen. So Roy Williams, he piloted North Carolina to its sixth, sixth NCAA National Championship, his third at UNC. <laughs> How about Roy? Three national championships, fourth in the number of Final Fours behind Wooden, Coach K, and Dean Smith. And how about this, Kevin? Eight times National Coach of the Year. Now, Northern Iowa wants a slower pace to the game. So you're going to see Carolina extending their defense, denying, trying to pressure and speed Northern Iowa up. A lot of ball movement, a lot of touches, a lot of ball screens. Carlson hit one short on this try. There's Brooks with great position underneath. National champs have a two-point lead on opening night inside the Smith Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And Dr. Scholes. Opening night, night inside the Smith Center, North Carolina with a two-point advantage. Dino Gaudio, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. And let's bring in Tara Petrolino, third member of our crew. Well, thanks so much, Kevin. You know, the heels have won their last 12 consecutive season openers. The last loss coming at the start of the 04-05 season out at Santa Clara. They went that game without then starting point guard Ray Felton, who served a one-game suspension after playing in an unsanctioned summer league game. Skip ahead here to 2017, and the Heels will go again without their starting point guard in Joel Berry. But this year's squad was reminded of that Santa Clara loss, most especially by assistant coach Sean May who was on that 05 squad. He said it really humbled us. He also told his team, it taught us never to underestimate an opponent and to always be ready. Last year was last year. This is the start of something new. Guys? Oh, and especially not this Northern Iowa team. This has been the class of the Missouri Valley for more than a decade under head coach Ben Jacobson. Well, if this season ends like that 05 season ended for Carolina, this, if they would happen to lose the game, I think Roy would be happy. Take that outcome. That was the first of Roy's three that he has now won. Tara mentioned Sean May. It's a beneficiary of many Ray Felton passes. Jalik Felton, his nephew on the floor. Nice bucket inside. And there is Luke May, the hero from the Elite Eight a year ago. Well, that's great penetration by Kenny Williams and a wonderful pass to May. I'll tell you, you took a bounce pass to the post. He has a little more time, Kevin, to react to it. And you're seeing right now Northern Iowa strength as well is going inside. In transition, there goes Kenny Williams. See, the, the hardest thing to do in our game today is keep the basketball in front of you. Wonderful penetration from Williams, which created the avenue for the pass to finish by May. Roy loves this kid at the free throw line. He, they love his toughness. He plays hard. But what Roy said, and he was talking in practice with me on Tuesday, like, Kenny has got to make shots for us. Uh, Junior started 22 of the first 26 games a year ago. Wound up having to get knee surgery in February, tweaked the knee over the summer, but feeling comfortable and feeling much more confident now as a junior. A lot of opportunities for these North Carolina guards with Joel Berry out. It really gives them an opportunity to show Coach Williams what, what they can actually do. And here is Felton. 
There's a whistle away from the ball, and that is an offensive foul. So back to Northern Iowa. Ben Jacobson is the all-time wins leader in program history at Northern Iowa. He arrived in 2001 with Greg McDermott, was an assistant for a few <laughs> years, and has been the head coach the last 12 seasons. Pretty good. Four NCAA tournaments, four NCAA tournament wins, and uh, a Sweet 16 in 2010 for Northern Iowa. Remember, they knocked off Kansas, the number one overall seed that year. This is Carlson at the top. Isaiah Brown open, and the rebound down to North Carolina. Now seventh Woods back into the game. He's the sophomore. He and Felton will handle the point guard duties primarily behind Joel Berry. Ben Jacobson, very experienced coach. That's a rarity that this team finished below 500. It, it, it really is. They've had some up and downs to their, their latter couple of seasons. And when I, what I mean by that is there's been some losing streak, four and five game losing streaks in there, but they're usually well prepared when it comes to the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. And Kevin, we're seeing one of the other young big kids, Sterling Manley from Ohio, number 21 for Carolina, inserted into the post. So not just Garrison Brooks, Manley will see a little bit of Brandon Huffman as well. There are three freshman forwards that regardless of whether they're ready or not, Roy Williams is going to have them in the rotation. Well, you know, number 30, Spencer Halderman, that kid is a three-point shooter. You better make sure you're there on a catch. 80% of his field goals last year were threes. And the triple cuts it back to a two-point game. May misfires. And remember, Northern Iowa playing without Wyatt Lojas. Sideline most of last season, suffering a little bit of a turf toe before the start of this year. And so a guard is out for Northern Iowa as well. Tonight at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. 21st ranked UCLA against Georgia Tech from Shanghai out in China. And you can always watch it on the ESPN app as well. A lot of suspensions in that one right there for UCLA, Ball, Riley, and Hill, Akoji, and Todrick Jackson for Georgia Tech. But you know what, Kevin? A lot of good players in this team. Jalen in this game, Hands, Aaron Holiday, and Thomas Welch. And the ACC's play, uh, Defensive Player of the Year last year, Ben Lammers, for the Yellow Jackets. He's a terrific forward. Remember, Georgia Tech made that run to the NIT final last year. UCLA coming off the Sweet 16 season. So Williams hits the triple on one side and now forces the turnover. Well, that's what Carolina wants to do defensively. Pressure, as we see Sterling Manley with the putback. When you play Carolina, big keys... Transition defense, number one, post defense, number two, and the third thing right there, Kevin, you have to keep the Tar Heels off of the backboard. That's what Ben Jacobson said to us. We have got to get back and set our defense before North Carolina starts to run. And McLeod misses. There's Pinson. Manley turns around, and there's a foul underneath. Well, this is what the Tar Heels need out of Williams, his three-point shooting. And if Northern Iowa is going to stay in this one right here, man, you better keep the heels off the offensive glass. Seven-point lead for North Carolina, 9-3 to three run. 11.08 left in the first. Well, on October 13th, the NCAA officially closed its investigation into North Carolina and its African-American Studies program. And you can see what Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC and who oversaw this investigation, said at the time, referencing Dino NCAA policy, saying the NCAA cannot police academic issues. And that was what was concluded on October 13th. No punishment for the University of North Carolina. 
Well, you know, it didn't hurt them as far as winning goes, Kevin. Obviously, back-to-back 30-plus win seasons. Last year, they win a national championship. But where it was affected, where they felt it was in recruiting, and in Roy's first 10 seasons, 26 McDonald's All-Americans. The last four years, just one. And now with the investigation all behind them, you know, ESPN 100, Paul B. and Cardi, until this evening's announcement with Barrett, had Carolina with the number one recruiting class in the, na- in the nation. That's where they affected it, uh, felt it the most. Yeah, this class, UNC already with three commits. But to your point, there are players on record saying one of the main reasons why they chose to go elsewhere was because of what many assumed to be impending violations. Oh, here is Duke now overtaking North Carolina in the 2018 recruiting class with the commitment you pointed out a moment ago of uh, R.J. Barrett, the number one ranked recruit in the class of 2018. He's from Ontario. He's a heck of a player. And Duke again scoops up another top-ranked commute uh, commits pardon yeah and that was Duke's actually uh, their third commit but Carolina's done a great job with recruiting uh, in the 18 class with Raycon Black 6'8 uh, uh, point guard could play one through four Nasir Little Colby White a terrific recruiting class good help side defense by Northern Iowa and seventh Woods heading to the free throw line Kevin, the other thing that it did for Carolina, they win a national championship last year, and because they're playing with juniors and seniors, so they weren't getting those top 30 guys, and Roy told me on Tuesday at practice that, hey, we recruited the same guys Duke and Kentucky was recruiting. They started getting those guys from 30 to 50 range, and uh, obviously worked out pretty well for them. You get a national championship out of it. The Kennedy Meeks or the Isaiah Hicks. So North Carolina with a six-point advantage. Opening night of college basketball. And it's going back to North Carolina. Let's go to Tara. Thanks, Kevin. Well, you guys are talking about some of the recruiting challenges that UNC had faced in past years, but how in recent years they've done okay, but they still are suspect to those freshman growing pains, especially talking about this year's bigs. You look at Brandon Hoffman and Sterling Manley. These guys can play, but what they don't know how to do yet is to learn how to run within the system. Coach gives no passes to these bigs. Meeks had to deal with it, Bryce Johnson had to deal with it, Sean May, they all had to figure out how to run the floor. And Coach said, heck, Huffman might be the best player we have two feet from the basket, but they've got to run hard on every play, and that only comes with time and game experience, guys. Good backdoor cut, Taiwan Pickford, the freshman, and do you know they all have to complete their conditioning tests? No, no question. Theo Pitts is going to hear it from Coach Williams on that one. Lost vision of his man. Had his eyes on the ball, but see ball in man defensively as Luke May with another basket on the interior. You know, going off of Tara's point, Luke May at times is going to have to play the five. He's going to have to go up against some of the best centers in the ACC. He will, and, and you'll see Carolina go some small ball with Theo Pinson at the four and Luke May at the five. Roy said the other the other day somewhat uh, flippantly that if you took each of the elements from these four freshmen that we have on the interior, he goes, I'm not sure we still have a good big guy. <laughs> Roy is certainly nervous. Tempering the expectations a year after a national championship. Great defense, Luke May running the floor. Recovers and misses from close range. Carlson with the board. Well, that's exactly what Tara was talking about. You see, Luke May, who's been in the program, knows that their big guys run the floor and run hard. If he didn't fumble the ball, he had a great look at the basket right there. Carlson is the red shirt senior from Waverly, Iowa. His coach challenged him to improve 
is outside shooting to stretch his game to the three-point line. Here is Pinson from long range. May with the board. And there's a whistle to pass inside to Andrew Playton. And North Carolina has it up early on opening night. Gonzaga and North Carolina in the championship game back in April. Top seed against top seed. Joel Berry, he scored 22. Justin Jackson chipped in with 16 more points. And then late, it was the block from Kennedy Meeks up ahead to Justin Jackson to seal the deal. And North Carolina, they didn't think they were going to get back there. The meth, the mantra was redemption after falling to Villanova the year before in the national championship game and then Nate Britton company they come back and they win it the following season boy it's easy to come back home when you have that national championship banner hanging up there <laughs> and you see Nate Britt right there uh, behind the bench but what we've seen in this game thus far Kevin is you're seeing Carolina establish the inside game there's Nate Brett. And putting a lot of foul pressure on Northern Iowa's big guys. Bennett Cook already with three fouls. He only played Cook 13 minutes last year because of foul trouble. And Carolina again on the offensive backboard with five offensive rebounds. And there's a lot of pressure on not just Bennett Cook, but Clint Carlson. That duo, two redshirt seniors, to catapult this team back to the top of the Missouri Valley Conference. And Cook now has to sit for quite a bit. Isaiah Brown misfires. And you're seeing Carolina on missed field goals right in their secondary. See, the post guys for Northern Iowa need to do their work early. Meet, meet those post guys from Carolina at the elbow before they establish post position. It looked like that sequence, Dino. You know, it's just Luke May with the lone. Big man inside. We're going to see a little bit of that this year. You, you absolutely will. With this lineup, Garrison Brooks, number 15, on the far side of the lane there, there. He's usually the guy that's posting. But as we know, Carolina runs that secondary action with that trail big guy. There's Brooks at the top of the key. You like Brooks. He's got probably, what, the highest basketball IQ among those young freshmen? He, he, he really does, and it's an interesting uh, take. He committed last fall to Mississippi State where his dad, George Brooks, is an assistant. Carolina stopped recruiting him, as, as you should when somebody commits. And at the end of the season, after the national championship, they get a call, Carolina, that he's changed his mind and wants to come to Chapel Hill and... Here he is starting in game one for the Tar Heels. All the way from Lafayette, Alabama. And there he is. Brooks with a quick eight points in the first half. Well, the challenge for Northern Iowa is keeping the basketball in front of them. Dribble penetration. Nothing hurts your defense more than the dribble drive. It created a help situation and a dump down. This is McLeod off the screen. Excellent hustle to force the turnover. Here comes North Carolina. Williams calling for it after the turnover. On this side, it's Felton. I need Felton. a timeout here. I'm sorry, Kevin. North Carolina stretches its lead to 15. Well, Williams creates the turnover. Felt it left open. Transition penetration and the kick out. For Tuesday on ESPN, the seventh annual State Farm Champions Classic from the United Center in Chicago. Four of the top teams in the nation, and we meet it. Number one ranked Duke against number two ranked Michigan State, and then four and five in the nation, Kansas and Kentucky. Champions Classic presented by State Farm. You can also stream it on the ESPN app. Four of the top five preseason ranked teams going at it. Not too bad five games into the season. Five days into the season, right. I should say. We got one against two. And uh, I saw two of those teams practice, Duke and uh, Kentucky. Wow. Both of those teams are talented. I'll tell you, I, I give Duke a little bit of the edge because of Grayson Allen. I think they have a guy with experience 
I think he'll have a fantastic year this year that could settle down those young kids for the Blue, De Blue Devils. Cook back into the game and with the shot clock expiring off the window. Well, Northern Iowa wants long possessions. They they want this game to be a little shorter. Carolina wants it up and down. Northern Iowa wants a slower pace. And, and I like the post defense right there from Northern Iowa. Fronting the post, little push off in the inside by Garrison Brooks with his second foul. And uh, I used to say, Kevin, if you're front in the post, you're, you're not letting it in there because if it gets in there, three things are going to happen. You're going to foul them, they're going to miss it, or they're going to make it. Two or three are bad. Don't let them catch the ball in the post. Coach Jacobson said that to you. I've got a couple keys. You've got to defend the paint, rebound. <laughs> You've got to get back on defense as well. And watch Carolina's defense because they're denying, pushing Northern Iowa out on the floor a little further than they want to be. Brandon Robinson into the game. That foul a moment ago on Kenny Williams. With no Joel Berry. You'll see Felton and Woods. Theo Pinson may even bring up the ball a bit. Brandon Robinson gets some extra reps also. Now Isaiah Brown, he's been gunning for that triple and he finally hits one. Yeah, he has struggled with his shot in two exhibition games. Uh, one for three against Wisconsin and one for six against Pembroke. Big shot for Northern Iowa right there. Wyatt Lowhouse is out, so someone like Brown is forced to hit some shots in the early going to the season. Always a disciplined team in the Missouri Valley Conference. Dino, they finished top four in the Missouri Valley for nine straight seasons. They are always in the discussion of NCAA tournament bid. Well, the big reason is the guy we just saw on the sideline, Ben Jacobson. He has done a marvelous job, in which is now his 12th season at Northern Iowa. And how about this, Kevin? Ben has signed a contract extension through 20. 27. I hope I'm still alive then. That's 2027. It's a 25 year plan. <laughs> Showed up in 2001. Haldeman, you talked about his three point prowess. So this is going to help you and I stay in this game. And, and, and you know what I love about the kid? Shooters know the shots for them before the ball even gets there. His feet are set, his hands are ready, and a wonderful release. Robinson can't answer. And there's the box out. Ted Friedman into the game for the first time. Brown again. And it's an 11-2 run for Northern Iowa. The three-point shot which Northern Iowa can shoot, the great equalizer in this game. They were okay shooting the three last year, about 33%. And have seven in the first half. That's about the spot he hit in Memphis <laughs> last season. And Luke May... He's starting to hit from mid-range, 10 points. Uh, what, the second biggest shot in North Carolina basketball history, the one May hit against Kentucky, right? That guy, what's his name? Uh, MJ made that shot. Remember that guy in 82? It's a very important distinction. Yes, the second, <laughs> second best. And now North Carolina runs. Spin move in the lane for Felton. Boy, you got to make sure you corral him in transition because he can really get to the basket. We talked to some folks around this program. Hey, who was that last great freshman point guard? Think about Ty Lawson. He's got some elements that are similar to his game. Brown, no. And here comes Robinson. Tar Heels were up 15 a few moments ago. Some Northern Iowa threes. Got it back to a manageable deficit. May turns no. And stays here. So North Carolina gets it, gets it when we return. Luke May with 12 points. The hero in Memphis last year. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. 
naturally refreshing. Let's get it. College troops are here, big time. Boom! It's number one Duke versus number two Michigan State. Number four Kansas versus number five Kentucky. One nice two blockbuster matchup with the college football playoffs, top 25 in between games. On Tuesday night, Duke and all of those freshmen, Michigan State and Miles Bridges, Kentucky and Kansas have great teams as well. Oh, Tara Petrolino has found a member of the national championship team, Nate Britt, who is back for opening night. He sure is, and he just told me, Kevin, he feels like he's been here too long. Nate, you walked in here, you see that national championship banner hanging. What is this moment like for you? I mean, I feel extremely accomplished. Being able to walk through the arena and and people welcome me as a national champion, uh, it feels great. I mean, looking up to those guys when I was in middle school and, and high school um, and seeing the previous teams win national championships, I'm just glad that I could be a part of it. You know, every player, every team is not without advers adversity and setbacks. You yourself suffered some. When you look at what happened to Barry at the start of this season, what did you tell him? and how to keep his head on straight. Yeah, I mean, that's that's when I tell Joel, now is the point where you have to be the most vocal. You're the senior leader, you were our leader last year, but now you have to be extremely vocal with the guys and, and making sure that, you know, Jalik and Seventh are doing everything they're supposed to do at the one spot. And during these games, you gotta be telling guys what to do throughout the game uh, because we're without them for a while. So, um, like I said, at this point, this is when he has to talk more than he ever has. We know that you're working out. I'm sure those UNC fans would love to see you out there on the court again someday. So good luck to you and thanks. Thank you. Well, it was Nate and it was Joel in that backcourt a season ago. That was a nice tandem. Right now for Joel Berry. Of course, this is not the ideal situation, but he's working on that left hand a little bit. You saw him in practice. He, he really is. And uh, he, he was taking a lot of shots with his left hand, which will help. Obviously his dexterity, but uh, this is a great opportunity to develop your bench with Carolina and Roy Williams. And this kid right here has been on fire as of late. Uh, Jalik Felton, extremely, extremely talented. And that helps pad North Carolina's lead to 14 at half. 12 points for Luke May. All right, after the timeout, back with the halftime report. The Carolina front line. All right, Tara Petrolino is with the Hall of Famer, Roy Williams. Coach, you start this one without Barry. I think they did okay. We've got to do a better job than we did with our shot selection early in the game. Four of our first six shots were three, and we've got a size advantage, and uh, so we've got to do a, play a little more intelligently than that. The big question mark was your young bigs. How do you think they responded? <laughs> Incomplete. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Roy Williams now with three national championships at North Carolina. I'm going to list off a few names here. John Wooden. Mike Krzyzewski, Adolph Rupp. Those are the only three that have more national championships now than Roy Williams. Uh, pretty good stuff. Fourth and final fours, too, behind Wooden, Coach K, Dean Smith, and uh, eight National Coach of the Year awards. 12 30 win season. Guys say, can Roy coach? I think he could coach pretty well. Well, his favorite city list was two. Now you can add <laughs> Phoenix to that list of St. Louis and Detroit. This is Carlson up at the top of the key. Ben Jacobson, 12th year now as head coach at Northern Iowa. He said, I pushed Carlson to improve that element of his game, to become a matchup problem, shoot some shots from beyond the arc. This well, year. what I liked about Luke May on the possession is he hits his own three on the offensive end, really contested the shot hard. And I think the most important thing you could do defensively, Kevin, is contest shots. Little danger zone right here for Northern Iowa. They can't allow Carolina to get much more separation if they want to stay in this basketball game. Struggled a bit on offense last year. Lost their top playmaker in Jeremy Morgan. Led the team in scoring a season ago. And sliding behind by 17. 
It was Luke Malin, all scores in the first half with 12, just added to that with a bucket. And the steal for the Panthers. Well, you see the youth of the Carolina front line right there. They double teamed him, ill advised pass to the perimeter on the kick out. Inside, good feed from Felton. And he set his teammate up there nicely, Garrison Brooks. Well, what I love with Brooks is how deep he was on his post stuff. But if you're going to front the post, which Northern Iowa did, you better have some backside help. And the southpaw. Carlson knocks down the triple. Now, as you watch Northern Iowa's defense, none of those guys are venturing outside the three-point line. They keep it pretty tight. They're in their gaps to eliminate dribble penetration from the Tar Heels. Brooks from a step inside the three-point line. May keeps it alive, and Williams got an extra look inside the paint. And so now a chance to convert. There's the offensive rebounds. North Carolina, the top team in the country in terms of offensive rebounds per game. Nice up and under that time for Cook. Well, you see a veteran guy in Bennett Cook, a redshirt senior, taking advantage of the freshman Garrison Brooks with the up and under move. What have you seen so far from the young front court for North Carolina you know early? What? I, Kevin, I, I love their athleticism. I love the length of those guys. They have a nice touch, Garrison Brooks in particular, around the rim. I think one of the things they could do is play the game a little lower and play a little bit harder. And it's what Roy Williams has been emphasizing. Kennedy Meeks and Isaiah Hicks, Justin Jackson, they're not walking back through the door. <laughs> But I'll tell you, in practice, th th those young big guys have all shown uh, some some really positive things. Garrison Brooks with his touch inside. The big kid Sterling Manley from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. A really long kid that early in his career, when I say early in his career, I mean in high school, suffered two broken legs. So he's just coming into his own. Carlson, no. And there's Theo Pinson. No doubt the playmaker on both ends of the floor for this team. Now he wants to run a little point. And he has, and he can. For three. Northern Iowa keeps it alive. Pickford last touched it. And here they are. This trio is not back. <laughs> These are three of the top four rebound leaders from a season ago. Well, you're looking at a, a, at a group of guys, Tony Bradley, the young one, the two veterans in Meeks and Hicks that scored the ball inside. Look what they shot from the field, all above 55%. And this was a tremendous rebounding trio. And remember, part of a unit that went to back-to-back -to -back national championships. Now, Williams, good sleight of hands. Both teams, terrific hustle. Williams for Carolina out in the passing lane, and that's what Carolina wants to do. They want to be disruptive with their defense. Deflections leading to runouts. Now, Carolina settled for a couple jump shots. You want to go back inside with the basketball if you're the Tar Heels. That is the emphasis of Roy Williams' coaching style, huh? Little flex action right here by the Tar Heels, which is that screen on the baseline. And it sets up Felton short. And, and, and like I said, Kevin, I think if you're Ben Jacobson at Northern Iowa, you're happy with those guys shooting contested jump shots. The cloud gets caught underneath. And yeah, they start to reverse it. Aaron pass. There's the ninth nor uh, part of the tenth Northern Iowa turnover. And that whistle takes us to a timeout. North Carolina still leads by 14. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Allstate. 
Are You in Good Hands? and Dr. Scholes. Opening night of college basketball, but also Veterans Day. And with Dino Gaudio and Tara Petrolino, I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. And uh, Dino, this is a special day, but you know, you coached at Army and you coached men that have served our country. Really, and, and, and I've coached some great point guards and Chris Paul and Jeff Teague and Is Smith. And there's a young man, Jamie Updegraff, that's a lieutenant colonel, his fifth tour of duty in the Middle East, leading 600 of our soldiers in Afghanistan. He was deployed four weeks ago. Be safe, my friend. Brown misfires on the drive, and Cook is fouled. That's my point guard right there. I'll tell you, one of the toughest, best leaders I ever had. And uh, like I said, his fifth tour of duty in Afghanistan, leading 600 of our soldiers over there. Let's go to Tara. Well, a special day for the UNI family as well, guys. Assistant coach P.J. Hogan's brother, Major Tim Hogan, served in the Army in Iraq in 2004 and 2006. And for Coach Jacobson, it is a family affair for these service members. His uncle Bill Clare served in Afghanistan. His uncle Neil Jacobson served in the Marines and ran a rescue helicopter in Vietnam. And his grandfather, Hank Labor, a retired Air Force vet, who is 96 years old and will be watching tonight from his home in Fargo, North Dakota. So we want to say, gentlemen, thank you for your service. And to Grandpa Hank, Coach Jacobson wanted to say hi. Guys? Well, we echo that, Tara, as well. Jacobson family decorated, of course. He's not happy with this call on that end of the floor. There is usually always one team that gave Wichita State some fits over the last decade in the Missouri Valley, and it was Jacobson and this team. Well, because ended up upending them. They are so well coached, and they play with a certain pace of play where the game's a little slower, so they're there. Maybe a little lesser talent down through the years than Wichita State, but the pace of play, the emphasis on defense, and uh, you're always in the game with that style, and Ben Jacobson has... Uh, done a marvelous job with it. This team won 31 games a couple seasons ago. You highlighted this earlier in the show. He hasn't just been to four NCAA tournaments. He has four NCAA tournament wins. That, 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 that's pretty darn good. And uh, overall for Northern Iowa, seven NCAA tournaments in the last 14 years. What he has done since taking over that program is, is really special. Opening night of College Hoops. North Carolina preseason number nine and with the sizable lead. Take a look at that score. Kentucky trailing Utah Valley by seven. And, and, and you know what the problem is in that one, Kevin? Their defense isn't too bad. Utah Valley only shooting 40% from the field and 20% from three. But surprisingly, Kentucky struggling to score only 26% from the field. Th that's a young Kentucky team. I watched them practice. They are incredibly talented. But I think the difference between some of these other young teams around the country, you have an experienced guy with them. I talked about Duke having a Grayson Allen. He's not playing tonight, but Carolina has a Joel Berry uh, in a Cam Johnson who's also not playing. But this Kentucky team, the youngest Coach Cal has ever had. That team lost about 94% of its scoring from a year ago. Also, shout out to Utah Valley. If they don't get it done tonight, you know who they're playing tomorrow? Duke. <laughs> <laughs> they get another shot at it. That's one of them easy schedules that the coach throws out there. All day ice bath on Sunday. Already scheduled, you would assume. 
Kenny Williams gets his man way up in the air, and he finishes at the rim. Well, I, I think the best fake you can have in our game is the shot fake because it makes the defense unathletic. You stand straight up, and a wonderful shot, shot fake drive by Kenny Williams. These early games are so important for Williams. Missed most of the end of last season. Coach Roy Williams said his confidence is still there, but he's getting the legs back underneath him. And there's a whistle. Ball will stay here. He's one of the leaders now. He's a junior and asked to take on a big piece of the leadership this season. And, and he should. He's a good defender. He's third on a team last year with 27 made threes. He's one of those guys that has to step up, emerge uh, when the opportunity presents itself. The coaching staff is high on Kenny Williams. Like I mentioned, they love his toughness, how hard he plays. He just has to make shots for them from behind a three-point line. On Tuesday, remember, number one against number two. How often do you get the top two teams in the country clashing this early in the season? Five days into the season. What a nice drop-off by Theo Pinson to Sterling Manley. Manley at Pickerington Central High School a season ago. Average nearly a double-double. Wonderful penetration. And I'll tell you what, this young guy right here, when he gets 100%, he's not there yet. Two broken legs in high school from Sterling Manley. He's got to build up his lower body. But, man, when you see him in practice, you cannot believe how long this young guy is. You'll see Manley, Brandon Huffman, another freshman who's about six foot ten, And you've already seen Garrison Brooks, the starter. Ah, oh, the pull-up, Pickford. There's Manley. Look in. You want him to go to Manley? Absolutely. Give that young guy the ball right there. And he gets fouled heading to the line. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know if I was coaching. I'd be happy with that little fadeaway right there. But uh, take that thing to the basket, young fella. 20-point lead for UNC. Alexander well, Kentucky that, was so. down at the half to Utah Valley. Dino, you're not keeping this young team down for too long. 16-0 run. You know what I would have liked to have seen. I'd love to have been in that locker room when Kyle was peeling the paint off the wall with that halftime talk. Embrace the journey, right? Absolutely. So here's Kentucky, ranked fifth in the preseason poll. Remember, four of those top five you're going to see at the Champions Classic on Tuesday on ESPN. But Wichita State you see in the top ten as well? Well, in the Champions Classic, Kevin, along with those four great teams, you've got eight players from those four teams projected to be first-round picks in the 2018 NBA draft. You know, Duke has Bagley and Allen. Carter and Duvall, Bridges Jackson at Michigan State, Diallo who had the dunk there, and Richard from Kentucky, and then don't forget about Graham and Mika Luke from Kansas. Really, really talented teams. Our colleague Jeff Goodman, he's got a great article up on ESPN.com, said this is kind of the year of the forward, of the big men. Coach K said he's never had a team this long and this big before. I, I, I saw them practice, and I think what you're going to see out of Duke more this year than perhaps you ever had is you're going to see uh, uh, Mike playing some 2-3 zone. A little bit of contained press back to 2-3 zone because they got some long dudes out there that could cover the floor. You're really seeing Carolina's defense force Northern Iowa into some ill-advised passes and turnovers. Late of the shot clock, and Haldeman can't convert. Playtech runs it down. Woods into the paint. Woods at his career high, nine points, and it's Manley who cleans up the boards. Well, Carolina gets out and runs so fast. Difficult box out assignments, especially trying to box out a team in transition. 
Fourth foul on Austin Fife, by the way. UNI coaches really like him and highly ranked recruits in Iowa. They, 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 they should like him. Great hands, great feet out of number 50. And there's Cam Johnson that uh, we're saying he might play tonight. I think we're not going to see him, obviously, now with the lead that we have. But that kid right there, man, could he shoot the basketball. He led Pittsburgh in three-point percentage, hit from behind the arc about 42% of the time. And no question, he replaces Justin Jackson as that threat from beyond the arc. In fact, Theo Pinson compares Cameron Johnson a bit to Justin Jackson. Well, you know what Cam doesn't do as well as Justin did last year? Cam, we know, can shoot the ball. He's a three-point shooter. But can he attack the closeout with the dribble like Justin Jackson could? Because guys are going to press up on him, and you look at him right there, you, you, you can't appreciate this. He is 6'8", mm. with a high release on his shot. He has all the, the, the ingredients of a great shooter. Shot 41% from threes last year, but diversi diversifying his game a little more will really help him and the Tar Heels. UNC did not have that type of firepower from beyond the yard a season ago. Brandon Huffman almost brought the rim down. Missed the dunk, though. Nice trip. Seventh Woods. He's flashed his defense in practice. He really has. We saw the steal right before the half, the last defensive possession for Carolina, and great hands again right there. Man, can that catch you. Spencer Haldeman, what a stroke. Well, you and I's relied on the three ball. Nine, but elsewhere they have struggled to shoot. And Spencer Haldeman on the Missouri Valley All Freshman team last year. Redshirt sophomore from Iowa, Kenny Williams. No Cameron Johnson, no Joel Berry, but UNC up big in the opener. This is Bennett Cook. Nice twist. You know what? He has a wonderful game down on the low post. Uh, what you have to do is you can't give him angles. He's not a great athlete. In other words, he's not going to jump over you. But if he gets his shoulders by you, he's going to score inside. Well, he's going to be a, a thousand point scorer at the end of this season. Hoffman with the stuff again. Pretty high percentage shot. <laughs> And Woods with the bump. Well, this kid right here, Haldeman, a long three. I love his stroke. And then you'll see Carolina on the other end. Kenny Williams with the three. Boy, if he could do that for the Tar Heels, they can be, he can be, and they could be special. And then one of the young big guys off the dish, off penetration. High percentage shot right there, Kevin, when you're throwing it down through the basket. Coach Roy said two feet in, right? Absolutely. Brandon Huffman. Huffman, now, he finished his high school career in North Carolina at Word of God Christian Academy. He started his high school career in Alaska. He's from Anchorage. He said to his parents, hey, I think I've got something here on the basketball front. I need to go. He was the one who made the initiative. Let's find a prep school. Word of God, that's where John Wall went. Obviously the point guard for the Wizard. Brian Clifton, the coach there at Word of God. I think a little warmer down here in the Carolinas than uh, up there in uh, Alaska. Now what the big fella needs to prove on a little bit is he, he, not great hands. And, and, and that's a problem for a big guy. So as long as he works on his ball handling, catching the ball cleanly. Because he is right now a defensive presence with his shot blocking. There's Luke May on the fadeaway. Career high 22. Well, so you can see the confidence that kid has. When we left a year ago in Memphis, went for 17 in that Elite Eight matchup against Kentucky, hits the shot with three tenths of a, tenths of a second left, propels North Carolina into the Final Four. Theo Pinson with a dish on that play. And, uh, man, since then, his confidence has been at an all-time high. 
like I said, Michael shot in 82, Jordan. Biggest shot in Carolina history. The shot Luke May made against Kentucky. I got to say the second biggest shot in Carolina basketball history. You know, that was a Sunday in Memphis. Remember, he was at his 8 a.m. class the next day. He got back in time for that. It's Huffman again. I'll tell you what, don't, don't, don't minimize the, the, the Carolina young guys because Northern Iowa, a nice and experienced front line with Cook and Carlson. And Cook fouled by Huffman. See, this is going to be the challenge for Northern Iowa this year. At times, they have big scoring droughts. Uh, scoring droughts. But remember, this team is also without the redshirt junior, Wyatt Lowhouse and Hunter Rhodes, a senior. They're missing their backcourt as well. Struggled yeah. a bit. They did, to, 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 to say the least. Last in scoring, last in field goal percentage. But this will be a different team when Lowhouse and Hunter Rhodes get back for them. Lost all that firepower from the 2016 season when defeated Texas in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Made it to the round of 32. Guys like Matt Bahannon and Paul Jesperson. And starting to rebuild around these two seniors, Carlson and Cook. Double-double for Luke May. Well, the pull-up, he didn't have that in his game last year, but you know what? Off the summer, he's got it now. This big guy right here is from my neighborhood, Huff High School in Huntersville, North Carolina. And we're seeing the diversity of his game, the quick spin, the mid-range jumper, and I love this right here. The shot fake, the pull-up, and the three-point range, also a part of his game. Man, has he diversified his offensive package. Showing off the full repertoire, a double-double. The 22 points, a career high. So April 3rd, in Phoenix, Luke May wins the national championship with North Carolina, of course. Fast forward. Two and a half months later, June 27th, Cole May and the Florida baseball program defeats LSU in two games, wins a College World Series. Who, who, who has the bragging rights in that house right now? Who needs to buy a ticket for these events? Just yeah. have kids that win national championships. And, and their dad was the quarterback at Carolina from 84 to 87, led the ACC in passing yards that year with over 1,400 yards. So pretty athletic family right there. You know what I like about Carolina right now? Like big lead, guys are moving the ball, passing the ball, looking for their teammates. And you get a great shot. Now 24 and this lead is ballooned to almost 30 on opening night. Is this team going to be a little more perimeter oriented this season? I'll tell you what, I, I think they absolutely will be. But when you're at practice, I mean, Roy is emphasizing, throw it inside. He is barking at those guys if they don't throw it inside. So uh, I think they're going to play the same way. Wonderful high-low pass right there. There's Luke May going to work again on Carlson. And when you have the big guys, Garrison Brooks at the top, throwing the high-low pass, that, that's a great sign for your team. One of the best ways, Kevin, to feed the post is from the top because it takes away help side defenders. Brooks, the freshman from Alabama. You mentioned it before, originally commit to Mississippi State. Roy Williams shows up at Auburn High School in September and offers that day. Had a change of heart earlier this year and decides to take his talents to Chapel Hill. And unlike football, when he said he was going to Mississippi State, I mean, basketball stops recruiting. Like Roy said, that was it. We were done. We never recruited him. We never called him. And all of a sudden, after the national championship win, they get a call, and the kid says he wants to come. 
Extra pass to Pinson. And Brooks, pardon me, that's Sterling Manley who draws the contact. Boy, when you're that long like Manley is, always keeps things alive. We would tell our guys, if you can't get the offensive rebound, just tip it, keep it alive, and one of our other guys might get it. That's Austin Fife's fifth foul, by the way. So his night is over. But high expectations if you are a Northern Iowa fan for number 50 in the purple. Well, you should have high expectations and feel good about this kid. Great hands, great feet. He really competes. A strong young man. Northern Iowa has a great find in that kid right there. He's going to be a terrific player for them in the Valley. Iowa high school basketball really was he and Connor McCaffrey. Those were the two big guns in the state this past year. Connor, of course, playing for his father at Iowa now. A foul on this side of the floor. Tonight, 11.30 Eastern. That's 8.30 Pacific. 21st rank UCLA and Georgia Tech from Shanghai. And you can always watch that game on the ESPN app as well. So, you know, you talked about it before. And five total players suspended, two on Georgia Tech side, three for UCLA. Kevin, as a team, you have to have core values, values like accountability, responsibility, sacrifice. Th those are shared beliefs that all teams have. You have to agree upon them. You have to buy in so that when, when you aren't together as a team, you know how you're supposed to act. You know how you're supposed to behave. You know, a team's based on certain relationships and certain values. I, I think the UCLA three, those freshmen, abandoned the core values of that team. And inactive tonight for UCLA. It's Leangelo Ball, Cody Riley, Jalen Hill. 80 points for North Carolina. Brown gets the roll. That's Isaiah Brown, sophomore from Flower Mound, Texas. With Wyatt Lojas out, you mentioned some extra minutes for Brown. He started the exhibition games and now here tonight against North Carolina. Good to see Brandon Robinson moving a bit four in the white. He was down to the ground earlier. Looked like he tweaked something. And there's a whistle inside. Well, what you have in Brandon Robinson, he played in 37 games last year at the two and the three. He's an athletic wing, not a great three-point shooter. What, what he does well, he has a wonderful mid-range game. Now, he needs to get stronger when you look at his body. He gets pushed around a little bit, but another guy that you could build around, the 6'5 sophomore from Douglas County High School out of Georgia. We were just talking about it, the emphasis on the guards. It's always the question, what, what happens the year after the championship season? A lot of folks are comparing how North Carolina looks heading into this season to that 2009-2010 team. Went to the NIT, sure. You coached against that team. They were riddled with injuries. They, they, they really were. They, they had a lot of injuries. Uh, uh, we were fortunate to beat them in Chapel Hill. Um, but, but what I'll say about this team right here, we've got to remember young guys, young big guys. We're seeing another young big guy in Walker Miller, number 22 inside. And the reason he wears number 22, that was his brother Wes that wore that number for the Tar Heels. Played here for three seasons, was on that 2005 championship team. Little difference between Wes at 5'8 or 5'9, and I'm being kind, and Walker at 6'10. The great injustice <laughs> in terms of the height differential. <laughs> There's Manley doing some work down on the block. I'll tell you, Kevin, these long young guys, I, we beat Carolina that first year, and uh, they had this skinny, long guy named John Hansen. And I'm like, eh, this kid's going to be all right. Second time we played him, he crushed us. And that's what you're looking at, some of these kids down the road. 
All going well for UNC, the defending champs up big. Opening night of hoops. Once again, the preseason favorite, Duke, number one in the country this season. The ACC is loaded, and you see at the bottom, Bonzi Colson, ACC preseason player of the year. We talk about wingspan, Bonzi Colson brings that to the table. Can do a little bit of everything. How good is this conference this year compared to a season ago? Kevin, you, you know what? I don't care what measuring stick you use, whether it's historical when it comes to the ACC. Uh, 17 NCAA tournament championships, 64 Final Fours, and then you go more contemporary as we see the three again from Haldeman. 11 ACC teams the last two years have reached the Sweet 16, eight national champions in the last 17 years. It, I just think year in and year out, best conference in the country. And then you got Duke, Carolina, Miami, Notre Dame, and Louisville all in the preseason top 16. So talent abounds in this conference duke by the way is stamping elon marvin bagley the third in his debut double double 25 points as well I, I am just amazed when i watch these kids now and they are kids just how talented they are when you watch carolina practice with bagley and carter and and, and Grayson Allen had a pretty good night tonight. Six for nine from threes from Grayson with 22. Whew. Roy, I, I mean, Coach K might have four guys off this team in the draft next year. And oh, by the way, the number one ranked recruit in the class of 2018, R.J. Barrett. <laughs> Duke, that's his yes. school. He just announced earlier today. Our pal Paul B. and Cardi all over that. And now Duke leapfrogging UNC as the top 2018 class, thanks to that signing. So we got Duke one and Carolina two. Amazing. Just the way we like it. Don't worry, our guy down in Lexington will be up there pretty soon. Those three North Carolina commits, they are all in the top 50. So it's Barrett and then Cam Reddish as well for Duke, who is the third-ranked prospect and you got in the ESPN Top 100. And you 100, have Dino. three ACC teams there sitting one, two, three in recruiting. How about the Champions Classic with those teams right there? And uh, I'll tell you, Kansas, what you love about them, a terrific backcourt with Devontae Graham, Malik Newman, the transfer from Mississippi State. Mikey Luke and Vic. I think the question for Kansas is, is as a boot key, can he do it inside? And the freshman Billy Preston, if they're vulnerable, Kansas, I think it might be on the interior. There's a whistle, and it goes against North Carolina. We've done the math for you. That's 18 national titles combined among this quartet. Duke and Michigan State on, what is it, Tuesday night, right? We might see that game again as a national championship <laughs> game come uh, April when that rolls around. Miles Bridges is excellent. He's on the preseason All-America list for Michigan State. You know, we know about the Blue Bloods. Folks, listen up. You've got a team this year. Who is your sleeper? Well, I, I, you know, it's almost like they're not a sleeper anymore. They were in the Sweet 16 last year. But I'll tell you, Kevin, I, I watched Xavier practice earlier this year with, with Blewett and J.P. Mercura on the perimeter, Sean O'Mara on the interior, and a terrific young recruiting class that Chris Mack has. And as we know, one of the great young coaches in America, Chris Mack, with three Sweet 16s, one Elite Eight, that Xavier team is Terrific. And right across the street, Cincinnati, they aren't too bad either. How about Cincinnati? Big win today. They put 107 points on their ball on the board. I think this is Mick Cronin's best team, Kevin. Here's why. They always defend. They always rebound. They'll do it again this year. But I think they have five or six different guys that could score the ball for them, something they couldn't do in years past.
All right, well, coming up tonight, 1.30 a.m. Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. It's Sports Center coming up after Georgia Tech and UCLA from China. What did Michael Porter Jr., Marvin Bagley, the third do tonight? We'll preview that Miami and Notre Dame football game tomorrow night, less than 24 hours away. That is a huge matchup, essentially a elimination game for the college football playoffs. And Sports Center at 1.30 a.m. Here's Rush. A few Tar Heels off the bench. You mentioned Miller before. Rush is into the game. Andrew Playtech has gotten some minutes. And give Northern Iowa a lot of credit. How about their schedule preseason? Carolina, Battle for Atlantis, Xavier, Iowa State, UNLV. Ben Jacobson hasn't avoided anybody. And for North Carolina, they'll head to Stanford in 10 days. And that game against Portland, circle that. That week, North Carolina participating in the Phil Knight Invitational. 16, some of the best teams around the country. They just hope that Joel Berry is going to be back for that Invitational. I, I think that's what they're looking forward to, having Joel Berry ready for that tournament. Or for that game, I should say. North Carolina could end up potentially playing Michigan State in that PK-80 tournament. It is a loaded field, and this is just <laughs> one bracket. Remember, there are two. There are two eight-team brackets in the PK-80. That is next week, or pardon me, in two weeks. I mean, you know, you... you, you, you. We're all prognosticators here, but how about if it's Carolina and Michigan State on that side right there? Yeah. Wow. Oh, by the way, Duke is in the other <laughs> eight-team bracket. That is the power of Nike and Phil Knight. They'll play those games at the Moda Center and also Veterans Memorial Coliseum out in Portland. A shot blocked that time. Luke McDonald into the game. Jump ball, it's going to go back the other way. And like we were talking about, Northern Iowa, they don't avoid anybody. You're going to have UNLV on there. There's their upcoming schedule. But also on there, battle for Atlantis, Xavier, Iowa State. Ben Jacobson challenges this basketball team. It'll get them ready for the Missouri Valley Conference. You know, we talked about his relationship with Greg McDermott. Adam McDermott on the floor. That's Greg's nephew on the team this year. Hey, North Carolina, the defending national champs, start 1-0. Plenty of new faces, Dino. We saw some perform tonight. Well, I, I think the young guys for Carolina, Roy's going to be happy with his young frontline players, and he's got to be especially happy with the performance of Luke May, 11th to, for 16 from the field, a double-double, 26 points. And you know what? Without Joe Barry and Cam Johnson, those guards did a pretty good job, albeit just seven turnovers in a game where you score 86 points because you know Carolina wants to go up and down. Pretty good showing by the Tar Heels in uh, an opening night without your backcourt out there. Last season undefeated at home, and they start this season 1-0 from inside the Smith Center. Plenty more to wrap this one up. The defending national champions start the season off with a win. Back after this. College hoops are here, big time. Boom! It's number one Duke versus number two Michigan State. Number four Kansas versus number five Kentucky. One nice two blockbuster matchup with the college football playoffs, top 25 in between games. The State Farm Champions Classic, it is on Tuesday night from the United Center in Chicago, North Carolina. With an opening night, 86-69 victory over Northern Iowa. You see the banner on the right side. 
They raised that on October 13th, and the defending champs open up the season with a victory. The last time we saw Luke May, he was hitting shots in the tournament. Repertoire looks like it has increased a bit. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of times guys have problems going from a role player making the transition to the guy, but not Luke May. He was just terrific tonight. And then Kenny Williams, Roy needs him to make threes. He plays hard. He defends. He took care of the basketball as well. He was also outstanding tonight for the Tar Heels. And Kevin, especially without Joe Barry and Cam Johnson, they needed perimeter scoring. And Kenny Williams delivered it tonight. But I, I think I think Roy's going to be smiling too with this young big guy. In just 18 minutes of play, five for six from the field he was tonight. Did a wonderful job at the free throw line. Four for four from the line. A promising bright future for Garrison Brooks. His coaches say he probably has the highest basketball IQ among the young players. You like him. Why do you think that? Why does he have such a high well, IQ? We're talking about a guy that's been around the game his entire life. His father is an assistant at Mississippi State. He's been there for six years. The kid grew up around the game, uh, a coach's son. So high IQ, a little bit ahead of the game, ahead of the curve of the younger big guys right now for North Carolina. But I, I think Roy's really pleased with the performance, especially without Joel Berry and Cam Johnson, your two starting starters that would be out there. Only seven turnovers out of the Tar Heels in what was a fast-paced game. For North Carolina. So coming up next, Kansas opens up the season against Tennessee State. Boy, that's another good Kansas team. Preseason top five. We know about Devontae Graham. Comes back, he scored 13 and a half points per game just about a season ago. And he is the heartbeat of that team. He really is. And you lose Frank Mason and you got a guy uh, uh, a Bill Self could rely on in Devontae Graham. Don't the, the, this kid right here, he'll be in the conversation for national, the Wooden Award National Player of the Year. And that's their strength, Kansas. They have a terrific backcourt with Devontae Graham, Malik Newman, the transfer from Mississippi State, Mikey Luke, and then uh, a Vic, of course. But the question mark for Kansas as to how far they can go, whether they win their what? What is it now? 14 right. uh, uh, championship is as a Buki and Billy Preston on the interior, those big guys have to deliver on the inside for Bill Self. So North Carolina, media day a couple weeks ago. They visited with the little experts. We all love them. Players found that out as well. What's your name? My name is Roy. You like the Tar Heels, I can tell. No, I don't. <laughs> you talked to Coach today? Yes. Was he nice and to y'all? And I said you guys are troublemakers. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> You're going to kick them on the butt if they lose. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've told them that I was going to do that. Do you ever throw a tantrum? No, I get up and stomp my foot. I stomp my right foot. And then I clap my hands really loud like that. One, two, three. That's right. That lets every official in the crowd know who's smart. You have to make your bed or do chores? Um, I do not make my bed. Who makes your bed? Your mom? I, I, I don't live with my mom anymore. What would you say is that naughty food? I say dadgum it a lot. You just said it, so time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Foot I'll dip. Oh, Ava, you right in my space. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue, blue fish. Blue fish, that away. He hanging on to my face. I made it! Go, 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 Who knew crunch time against Gonzaga was easier than that? 
UNC opens up the season with an 86-69 victory over Northern Iowa. The defending national champs get 26 points, 10 rebounds from Luke May. Shot the ball well from all areas of the floor. And we saw some of the young pieces in the front court, including Garrison Brooks, was solid early on as well. Well, the young big guys really impressed me. Luke May absolutely did. And uh, I like the way Carolina took care of the basketball, just seven turnovers without uh, the ACC most outstanding player in the Final Four most outstanding player, Joel Berry, not playing tonight. What does this team get back when Barry and Cam Johnson return? Well, you, you have a guy that you know has done it before that can deliver, that you could put the ball in his hands at 7 o'clock and say, hey, give this thing back to me at 9. I trust you. We'll see. North Carolina opens up with an 86-69 win on opening night for Dino Gaudio and Tara Petrolino. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long from Chapel Hill. Coming up next, Tennessee State and Kansas. Let's go out to Lawrence.